this container contains um, two sled items. Um, that's item, sled item 22.4. Um, which is a swab of debris that I took, a reddish brown debris swab from the right side of the item 22 receiver. Which item is 22? Remember? Item item 22 was the camouflage um, Benelli model Super Black Eagle 3 semi-automatic shotgun. Um, and it also contains sled item 22.5, which was another swab from that same shotgun, and that was um, reddish brown debris swab from the left side of the item 22 receiver above manufacturer information. All right, folks, there's no murder weapon. You're not gonna see prosecutors bring a weapon or two weapons into this courtroom saying, yeah, this is the gun. This is the gun that killed Paul Murdoch. This is the gun that killed Maggie Murdoch. No, it's not gonna happen. But today, prosecutors did as much as they could to link Alec Murdoch to the murder weapon because there's shell casings found next to Maggie. And they took those shell casings and compared it to some other shell casings found on the property. Here's the expert giving his analysis to the jury. It was determined that those items, um, and to include items 108, 113, 116, 117, and 122, also had those same matching mechanism marks to conclude that they had been loaded into, extracted, and ejected from the same firearm as those at the crime scene around Margaret Murdoch's body and those uh, several recovered from the home. So the items collected around Maggie, Margaret Murdoch's body matched the items collected outside the house, which matched items that were collected in the field at the shooting range. Uh, yes, sir. I was able to identify that the cartridge cases uh, recovered items two through seven near the, uh, the body um, did have matching mechanism marks with several of the items from the area around the home and those in the shooting field and several of those in the shooting field to conclude that some of those had been, or excuse me, that those had been loaded into, extracted and ejected from the same firearm at some previous time. Is that it? Is that enough? Will the jury be convinced that the casings are run through the same gun, a gun that's obviously, if there's old casings there, the front porch, connected to the Murdoch home? A gun that is now missing. Let's bring back in our think tank, still with us, Eric Bland and Chris Adams are with us here at Fat Jack's. And back home after teaching uh, the youngsters a little bit about the law, Joe McCullough. Joe, I'll go to you on this. Um, I'm excited for the prosecution here that at least they can make the argument that there is some evidence that can get a murder weapon linked to Alec Murdoch because it's his property, his gun room, his son's gun, that gun's missing. The jury can put two and two together and say, of course it's missing because after you kill someone with it, you're not gonna leave it laying around. Two words, junk science. I've been at this 46 years. I'm the director of the Innocence Project. We've convicted scores, hundreds, thousands of people in the last century for bite marks, fiber evidence, comparison of alloy of bullets, all of that discredited, all of that crap science. And what you saw today, I was amazed. I mean, I understand it comes in and is presented as expert testimony, but you saw a young man struggling not to have to concede there is no objective standard for what he says is a match. And that's troubling to me. Now, Mr. Bland, with all due respect, is a heck of a good civil lawyer, but he's not a criminal lawyer. Chris, on the other hand, has done a lot of prosecution. I guess he's doing, what are you doing criminal defense now, Chris? But, but these are real issues. So, I mean, not one of these guns that have been paraded around the courtroom and no doubt will be paraded in the closing argument not one of them has anything to do with this murder. So, I mean, there are so, some significant issues here. So, you, you, what you're telling me is this going to be a battle of the experts, and that there's going to be an expert come in and say this is all junk science? Is that what's going to happen well, here? Well, I, I hope the jury got that feel when this young fella, when challenged to say that there was some magical uniqueness to his opinion, he literally locked up for a count of 10 or 20. I, I found it quite interesting, but what I'm saying is that that this is just more 
uh, necessary circumstantial type evidence that I hope matching is not misunderstood by this jury and the defense did a pretty good job of showing that and I expect they probably will have an expert. So Chris, what is it, what are the local jury going to do with something like that? Do they, do they believe in this science, you think? Well, Jim Griffith asked uh, well into the cross-examination, uh, you've heard about the National Academy of Sciences, uh, uh, which was funded by DOJ. They criticize this comparative stuff, and, and the expert admitted that, yes, that they, there is criticism, but by golly, this is good stuff, and we're like doctors. I think he said on redirect, is, he's like a doctor. They're not like doctors. They, their comparison, his experience, his judgment, uh, but he's eyeballing the evidence to look for similarities. That's fine, it's admissible, but it's, it, it's not certainty. Um, it'd be very interesting to see who the defense calls. Do they call another ballistic expert or do they call some a scientist who could say there's no empirical studies that validate this? And I would think that the jurors would be interested in, in getting the other side of the yeah, story. Yeah, but you know what's interesting, Eric? I bet if they didn't match, the Listen. defense would be would be saying this is this is lock solid it's science, only, ladies and gentlemen. It's only junk science for Joe if it doesn't benefit his client. If it benefits his client, it's the best science in the world. It's peer reviewed, passes Kumu Tire, yada yada. Here's the real thing: Did Dick and Jim go out and buy themselves a 300 blackout and run bullets through it, and does it have the same? stippens and striations through it. That would be interesting because it could be a glove doesn't fit type of moment. Oh yeah. We don't oh, know yeah. that. But if if indeed these are unique patterns, like your fingerprints are all unique, then this is not junk science. Whether it's enough to convince a jury that it came from one of the Murdoch guns, I think the friend did a real disservice to the defense because he said, Paul and I cited in a uh, 300 black op, one that was tan, camouflage painted, in April of 2021, and that gun was not on the property when the police came and did their search. Yeah, that's 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 crucial too. Again, a jury's allowed to use common sense, right? That is like it's like, listen, of course the gun's missing because you you murder someone, you're not going to leave it laying around, and what are the odds? What are the odds that within what a month, two months, the gun is just disappeared it's just vanished I got him nodding his head I'm gonna leave it at that don't say anything I got a defense attorney to nod along with me oh I'm doing well tonight